to be involved or to not be involved, the impact of extracurricular activities on high school freshmen during their transition to high school. We know that their transition to high school can sometimes be tumultuous for students. It can be a shock for students after elementary and middle school years filled with teacher parental involvement. Oftentimes high school is the point in a student's career that more independence is expected. A larger building, sometimes less personal accountability measures can all cause students to struggle with this transition. Grades can plummet and semester courses can be failed. Some types of students, such as those that are not in uh, advanced classes, can struggle even more. Sometimes students will lose interest in school and academics altogether. Other interests take root and school performance can decrease. This idea of being anonymous in high school can be quite alarming with a large number of a uh, large number of students in schools, oftentimes students prefer to go through high school without being known or engaged in the wider circle within the school. Students sometimes then can feel overlooked. They just want to blend in or they do blend in while other students are maybe noticed a bit more. Students can become disengaged with the entirety of their high school experience, missing out on the staples such as homecoming, prom, home football games. The sense of belonging and school spirit might not be present at all. The offerings of school-sponsored extracurricular activities can also go unnoticed. Students may feel isolated in their new surroundings, grades may suffer, and they don't even realize that they could be involved with a wide variety of activities within the school. High school students can struggle with the transition to high school for a variety of reasons, and this can affect grades, um, classes are failed, and the freshman year um, is a struggle for students. So this transition is very important for future success and perhaps extracurricular activities are as well. So the purpose of this study, uh, this correlational study, was to explore the relationship between involvement in school-sponsored extracurricular activities in high school and academic performance, specifically the number of failed semester classes during freshman year and grade point average in high school freshmen experiencing the transition to high school at a large suburban high school in the Midwest. The research questions, what is the relationship between extracurricular involvement in school-sponsored activities and the number of failed semester classes at the end of the school year for Shady Pines High School freshmen? What is the relationship between extracurricular involvement in school-sponsored activities and grade point average at the end of the school year for Shady Pines High School freshmen? And why do students choose to not become involved at Shady Pines High School? So some of the areas um, in a lit review that was conducted for this, uh, for this study, um, one area focused on that transition to high school and what research has shown, extracurricular effects, and then the guiding theory within this study as well. If we briefly just look a bit at that transition to high school, Abel MacGyver and Yuvas McKeat were two seminal researchers in this. Um, much of the research that was found um, showed that the transition to high school is crucial for success throughout high school. Also, parent engagement is huge from middle school to high school and proper district communication and high school communication to parents, as well as parent involvement um, within this transition. It was also found that the more students are connected, then the more involved they become in school and therefore better supports might need to be added um, districts need to be aware of this need to plan for a better transition, to communicate for it, and to make students feel more connected. Family engagement, again, is key. Abel McIver in 2015 found significance. Um, there is a significant negative relationship between outreach to family and students who falter freshman year. And it really is called the gatekeeper year. It's imperative to graduation and student success the freshman year. Parents should be supportive, monitoring academic and social progress. It found, uh, Abel MacGyver, that research study found that um, that parental involvement was key as well in monitoring um, student success. Uh, Imura 2020 found that even the way the student views the transition is important. This idea of event centrality, that it's important in a student's life can lead to a good transition and better social emotional well-being. And it really can be a turning point for students if good memories are made, um, positive memories that can lead to a positive well-being even after high school. 
A couple studies were quite similar to this study, um, looking at the transition and extracurricular involvement. In one study by Boner in 2013, it, that study did show that activity involvement in high school in general can prevent issues. It can give students peer relationships, opportunities for that visibility. Social status, which is so important to students, extracurriculars can, find, can provide that. And also community service clubs in particular lessen depression while sports provided friendships. Another similar study in that transition with extracurricular activities, Modeki 2018, analyzed the breadth of involvement, how that affects self-concepts. Those that are involved kind of within that wider breadth of activities at that transition to high school, um, there was a less decline in self-concept as well as the academic self-concept. So with the uh, transition to high school, if involvement would, um, or is a key attribute within that transition and to success, that engagement kind of within school, within extracurriculars would seem then to affect and impact that uh, transition and academics. If we look specifically at extracurricular activities and some of the effects, uh, so it really can be broken down, um, much research uh, centered around the types of activities, the intensity of activities, the timing of activities, and simply other factors. However, across the board, most of the research did show that extracurricular involvement is an effective element for student success, overall success throughout high school and even after high school. It predicted grades, self-esteem, um, college enrollment, lack of substance abuse. Specifically, we can look at behavior in high school. So 10th graders in a study by Eccles and Barber they found that less risky behavior was involved in 10th graders, less alcohol usage, less skipping of school. Um, involvement was a protective factor being involved for illegal behavior in general in high school students. Dreisen's in 2015 found a buffering effect. It was seen for those that were involved. Um, there was a less dropout rate there. Uh, there was more sense of belonging. If we look at other... Uh, Kind of areas within the study of extracurricular activities several studies have looked okay what are the byproducts of being involved which kind of have a role in um, this current study here too that i conducted but past research showed that executive functioning skills are higher in students social skills leadership experience practical life applications all of this um, be, are elements really of involvement and sports and clubs can help to build that and therefore we would think then improve academics because of that. In one study by Bro 2002, uh, extracurriculars really develop skills um, such as work ethic, authority, perseverance. Martian Kleitman in 2002 found better outcomes in identity due to involvement. And then specifically within this study and looking at academics, past research with academics pretty much across the board found that achievement levels were higher in students that were involved. Showed academic gains, um, even after um, looking at demographics, there were still academic gains there. Um, sports, in a study by Bro, found that um, achievement in the classroom um, was better, and specifically math scores for athletes seemed to be better. Um, <clears throat> psychological attachment, um, school, um, kind of the GPA and um, college admissions and school attendance, less risky behavior that was in a study by Ethels and Barber, all uh, were found in a study. Also, types of clubs, we could look at that area as well. Past research has been conducted in that, and it shows that involvement, no matter what, is better than no involvement. While certain clubs, such as athletics, maybe show better school belonging or certain activities, uh, such as performing arts, in a study by Fredericks and Eccles showed lower alcohol usage, favorable perceptions of peer groups. Um, so a wide variety, um, depending on the type of club, um, but we know that um, just involvement in general was key. And finally, breadth and intensity, can students be too involved? That's another area of research. And so is there a threshold? So yes, there was a small threshold of five activities and 14 hours a week where achievement scores declined a little bit. But in general, in this study by Fredericks, um, 
she found that youth really probably weren't really all that overscheduled. And what was found most was that students are not um, involved enough, that there was no involvement and they need to be more involved. So a literature review in all of these areas provided some context for this study. And in moving on and talking about the theoretical framework that helped to guide this study. So John Dewey, of course, believed in the socialization of learning and connecting life with learning. In his book, Education and Experience, he connected experiencing learning to retention of learning. When students experience what they're learning, they're engaged, they feel more likely to remember what they have learned. And socialization is that key of experiential learning theory. Learning is based on experiences that develop the learner. In Kolb's model in 2014, it showed the need for experience, observation, conceptualization, and active experimentation. So learning while doing is really at the heart of experiential learning. Therefore, if students are learning some of these soft skills in extracurricular activities, can that feed into and spill over into academics? So I created this model kind of based off of Kolb's thinking with active experimentation, concrete experience, reflective observation and abstract conceptualization. And as those elements of Kolb's model feed into extracurricular activities, what are the outputs? So leadership skills, work ethics, social skills, positive self-image. It would seem that experiential learning theory would um, be all a part of, and really the essence of extracurricular activities. So the methodology in this study, it was explanatory correlational. Um, the variables within research question one and looking at that school-sponsored extracurricular involvement with number of failed semester courses, the independent variable was the level of involvement in the extracurricular activities, and the dependent variable was the number of failed semester classes. Research question two and looking at the GPA, so the independent variable was the level of involvement in extracurricular activities, the dependent variable was the GPA, and in question three, that was the open question, Italian frequency chart was used on that one. So the sample and participants, approximately 750 freshmen at a large suburban high school. Recruitment took place last spring through email to all parents and students over about the course of a month with 126 participants. After all assents and consents were, um, were given, um, a data form through Qualtrics was used then in May of 2023. And GPA and failed semester courses through Skyward, um, the software for the grading system at this school. This took place after school was over to get those finalized GPAs for freshman year. And then data analysis took place. So on this data form uh, through Qualtrics that was given um, in May, three questions were on it. First, a count was conducted. Uh, for school-sponsored extracurricular activities. So a list was given of all of the school-sponsored activities within the school and students could count and then write the number. A demographic question of honors designation of a yes or no answer and a table was given as well that showed all of the possible honors or weighted courses basically that a freshman could take. Just simply one honors course would designate that student as an honor student. And then finally, with that open-ended question, content val validity did take place through the Lashi method. So the analysis, correlation and Pearson's correlation um, with the Pearson's R took place, linear regression um, while controlling for honors and non-honors, um, as well as the t-test for question one and question two with GPA and um, number of failed courses. Again, that tally and frequency chart took place with question three. And a few other side notes, the GPA is on a 4.0 scale with the weighting that can bring it up to about a 5.0. Um, number of failed semester courses, again, it was not for an entire year, but each semester. And then again, it was just school-sponsored activities and that non-honors and honors, it was based off of being involved or in, enrolled in at least one honors course. So a chart here to see um, what it looked like with the number of activities, kind of the frequency of activities there, uh, with the highest number being eight and plenty not in any or at one or two activities. So this is, uh, we can see the percentages and the number of students. So 31 students 
not enrolled or not um, involved in any activities for freshman year. It's 24.6%. Um, one in two activities, definitely um, higher there, 27%, 27.8%. And four or more, just 7.9% were um, really involved. So as we move into our results with research question one, the relationship with failed semester courses, first, I conducted a t-test. Involvement in this case meant just one activity. And so the number of failed semester courses um, was significantly related um, to student involvement in school-sponsored activities, p-value there being 0 0.003. Um, the mean number of failed courses for those not involved in activities was close to two. The mean number for those that were was much less than one. And I did conduct the Wilcox and rank sum for non-parametric reasons, just in case, and very similar results, but even more significant. The correlation here with the Pearson's R um, found the number of school-sponsored activities and number of failed courses as um, a weak correlation there, a negative correlation with negative 0.29. Linear regression showed significance p-value less than 0 0.001. When controlling for honors, the number of school-sponsored activities is insignificant. So that means that honor status doesn't really explain the variation. Only being involved um, kind of helped to show this correlation. And finally, another Pearson's R test uh, was conducted here with those students that are involved on a scale of one to eight activities. So just the 95 observations, just those involved with one to eight activities, taking out those with zero. And so a negative but insignificant correlation between the number of activities and number of failed semester courses was seen here. So it really means that the protective factor of just being involved in at least one activity was present in not failing courses. There seems to be no benefit in this case on failing a course um, if being involved, uh, if you're involved in more than one activity. This is going to be different for GPA, but here um, it showed that just one um, activity was a protective factor for students. In looking at grade point average, so first a t-test here was conducted um, to see that significance in involvement with just at least one activity in this case. And so there was significance related to student involvement um, with a, a negative 0.52 there for the t-test, but the p-value less than 0 0.001. The mean GPA was 2.45 for those not involved. Those that were involved, it was 3.64. Will Cox and rank sum again done with, again, very highly significant p-value. In looking at Pearson's R here, um, we have a 0.48, which shows significance and the p-value less than 0 0.001. So also when controlling for honors, the number of school-sponsored activities is also significantly related to GPA. Um, in this case, though, both the number of activities and honor status do play a role in the GPA. Histogram here showing the variety of GPA within the participants. And then finally, in just those 95 observations, again, another t-test on the scale of 1 to 8, uh, there was a positive correlation between number of extracurricular activities and GPA um, with a 0.3 and for the Pearson's R and a 0 0.003 for um, the p-value. So the more school-sponsored extracurricular activities, in this case, a student is involved with, the higher the GPA. So a little bit different than those failed semester courses. In this case, the more involvement, the higher the GPA. And then the open-ended question. So for the 31 kids that chose uh, zero activities, they were not involved, Skip Logic and Qualtrics moved them to this open-ended question. The most common reason being um, the lack of time or other schedule commitments outside of school. Some mentioned they didn't know about the club, uh, missed the first call out meeting perhaps, other cited parental issues with maybe not having a ride or other stress um, within their lives and, and why they didn't become involved. So this is a bit of a breakdown of it. Again, with 12 students kind of theming these open-ended responses, mentioning schedule conflicts or not enough time. Uh, to note, two people said they could not make the team in a large school. It is rough to make a sports team. So perhaps they wanted to be involved but didn't make it in that case. So my study aligned with other previous studies. Academics do show that um, they're going to be higher in students, in this case with less failed semester courses, a higher GPA if students are involved in extracurricular activities. 
Um, so it shows that this transition to high school, um, you know, we know it's key from past research. And in this case, for students that were involved, um, academic measures uh, were increased. Um, the study again showed that more activities do affect academics, specifically grade point average is going to go higher with the more involvement within activities, with more activities. And again, Dewey's experiential learning theory to take into context that um, extracurricular activities are kind of the essence, as mentioned, of experiential learning, but for soft skills, for life skills, and thinking then that that can transfer into academics and, and students uh, making academic gains because of it. Behavior in past research seemed to improve, and again, other skills in past studies also seem to improve. And in looking at Dewey and Kolb again, students experience, observe, conceptualize, and experiment, and extracurriculars provide that, that socialization while learning. And therefore, those transfer of skills, um, it's possible then that um, that transfer can help improve students' academics. So recommendations simply require involvement, at least one activity, and support students in that. Having that club involvement fair, having um, parents maybe attended as well on an orientation night where students can um, see the wide variety of clubs and having it very well communicated and organized where advisors perhaps have at least a, the first few meetings scheduled. Um, and so students and parents can kind of know what they're getting involved with. Having club records, having advisors keep track of attendance and having somebody designated within the building to track all freshmen to make sure that involvement is taking place. Having that communication to parents, letting them know it's important and letting them know the wide variety of activities. Perhaps uh, having some athletic changes so maybe a strong intramural program within the school or large schools coming together to have a C team, a D team, but allowing students who want to be in, in sports, not necessarily being cut and that's it. And so there's not much involvement seen, but allowing more sports and more sport involvements within the school. I think investing in this, allowing perhaps a homeroom every week or two weeks, and that's the club meeting time. And so everybody, you know, can become involved in school. They, uh, they, have, they do it during school, during a homeroom period. Um, paying for your advisor stipends and somebody within the building that would help track this. And then logistically, perhaps a secondary bus route after school that would pick up students who stay for clubs or allowing for that homeroom period once in a while to allow for students to, um, or throughout the whole year, to allow for students to become in clubs, uh, involved in clubs within their school day. So obviously limitations and delimitations within this study, time constraints, um, you know, stronger students might gravitate towards extracurricular activities to begin with. This district is a higher socioeconomic area. Home life is not account, accounted for. Non-school sponsored um, activities are not accounted for or included in this study either. Could be errors on the student data form. Um, again, delimitations, the fact that it's only school sponsored activities that were involved with this study. So further research definitely can play, take place looking at those activities outside of school, the breadth, depth, and types of activities for freshmen going across all levels, upper grades in high school, middle school, um, and also looking at what other factors are causing some of our freshmen to falter. So this research study has allowed for a specific glimpse into high school freshman involvement in, large, in a large school district. The number of activities as well as just simple involvement or not, both correlated with higher academic measures. Um, regardless of honor status. The transition to high school for freshmen, specifically in academics, is uh, proved to be more successful when students become involved in activities offered within the high school. The transition to high school can be one of success, both inside and outside of the school day. Students can feel more pride, gain skills, learn by doing, and gain invaluable relationships through involvement. Schools can do more for students in this transition, and providing a plethora of activities for outside the academic day can influence a student during the school day and far beyond the walls of the high school. Thank you.